Uh, this yeah. one for Brad uh, from Juan. Brad, your mini DSP tutorials helped me tremendously in setting up dual subs. Oh, thank you. Put a lot of time into those yeah, videos. You, you, you have any <laughs> quick, quick tips, you know, uh, for REW or for mini DSP? Like, what's what's something oh, yeah, that you, you asked me this and I totally. Like, I remember you asked me this the other day, and I was like, I I think so. I, I never even thought of any. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, really basic stuff that's that that people uh, get wrong with the mini DSP uh, is not setting not setting their like output, or they'll they'll do both sub inputs out of their receiver mm -hmm. into the mini DSP, which you don't really need to do. You just need to just go oh, one. Yeah. You're you're, you're overcomplicating stuff, especially if you're if you have a newer sub or a new I'm sorry, a newer receiver that has dual outs that are independent that have different distance levels and, and, uh, or just, you know, different, uh, distance settings and levels. You're kind of adding more complexity than you need to. Uh, th that would be very helpful if you had like maybe eight subs and you needed too many DSPs. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, just that, that's like one of the big things is that I get that question all the time. It's something I never even talked about. I don't think in any of the videos, is just one one output from your receiver into the mini DSP is all you need for your subs. You know, there's and, there's that there's that acronym that comes to mind, K I S S. Keep it simple, stupid. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Right? Just one. Um, who are and they then referring as far as to stupid in that one? What's that? Um, anyone? Who? Everyone. Oh. <laughs> keep it simple. I do it all the time. I always wonder. Like, are they saying like, keep it simple and stupid, or are they calling you stupid? Yeah, I think I think we are the. The one, the person yeah. is the yeah. stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Try, uh, stop trying to overcomplicate yeah. something that's simple. Ah, uh, you know. Ah, uh, okay. That's how. That's, that's how I interpret it. That's what anyway, I see. Anyway, continue. Okay, so D one sub DSP out. Tips. Don't use both. One sub out. Yeah, don't use both. And then I think for REW, I, um, it's just never loading your calibration files. I've seen that before. Like other people, like I, I helped a couple people set up. There's, I'm like. You bought this U mic for like 120 bucks, and like you're like, yeah, your measurements. I don't do before and after measurements, and I'm like, yeah, you definitely want to load those up. They're like, well, where do I even get them? It's like, <laughs> can't help I got you, you there. Here's the here's the link. Yeah, yeah. So not so, or so having they, even the wrong calibration file, right? Because there's the, the right, yeah, like if they're the, not the using the 90 degree, degree, degree yeah, yeah. If they're you just you know they got it pointing straight up, but they're using just the regular one. I'm like, you're not gonna. That's for, you know, measuring uh, on access, you know, speakers. And you want the 90 degree one if, you, if you're if you having that set up, you know, that way. Yeah, I'll, I'll even add to that and say, double check to make sure that you actually have the U mic processing the audio. Because if you disconnect that <laughs> on the yes. Mac, I yeah. don't know if it's like that. On, if you disconnect it and reconnect it, you think it's just going to start using it again. Find it again. It no. Yeah. Like if you, I've, I've measured a few times, like what? Using the Mac mic. Measurement. It's like using the, it's using yeah, an internal yeah. mic. Yeah. And oh I think my. the one thing that I would always say is, so I use REW to level match my speakers after, because I don't trust Odyssey's, you know, level matching. So I like to set everything up at zero to be on the rec uh, receiver. And so in order to get it to read, you know, you have to set uh, REW to minus 30 dBSF. The problem is, Sometimes I'll set it back to minus 12 or I'll go to do a measurement and forget that it's at minus 12 and just get blasted with sound. So make sure that when you go to set, like if you're, if you're doing level matching, make sure you return that volume down on the receiver again before you go to take a measurement or at least make sure that the measurement you're taking is at minus 30 when you go to, you know, before you hit start. It's, uh, it's something that I've honestly, I still do. <laughs> and I'm, wake up call. Yeah, yeah, I'm like... Telling my wife, Trish, it's okay. It's okay. I'm I'm alive. May have broken a subwoofer, but <laughs> uh, Billy P says, Brad, ever thought about a live mini DSP Q and A? Um, I have not actually. That's a good uh, idea. But that's actually a really really good idea. I've thought about actually. Um, uh, now that I have uh, access to Streamyard Pro, doing like live mini DSP calibrations, like yeah, you know, that would be cool. Starting from scratch on my system, zero everything out, just walk people through in real. Yep. I mean, it might take two or three hours, but yeah. people can, you can reference um, the, the. You, can, you, uh, you know what we should do? In One. As another computer, right? So you can have your laptop or whatever, and then your this computer to do that. Yeah, do the yeah. I've I've been like loving Streamyard Pro. Just like they have like the multi cam, like you can have like two cameras and everything. So I'm like, this is cool. So I'm I'm able to like just switch back and forth in real time. So that's pretty neat. 
So yeah, I might do that in the future. That's Maybe we could do idea, like a Billy simple, Kirkman. a simple calibration together, right? And just like pick somebody and say, "Hey, we'll hook you up." You know, like do it there you go. on somebody's real system, right? Yeah, all the yeah. issues and everything, right? So you, you get to see yeah. the raw, all the problems. That How do we solve have. this? And yeah, why why do we get worse response when we you know reengage the crossovers and? Like, how do you figure yeah. that out remotely? That's really hard. I've run into that numerous times on systems where I just, all of a sudden it's like, okay, the sub response was great. And now, even though I'm crossing them over at like 100 hertz mm -hmm. or something or 80 hertz, suddenly all the stuff below it is affected. I'm like, going, it's really hard to troubleshoot stuff remotely, depending on the complexity of the system, too. So that's, yeah, but that would be fun. That would actually be a fun thing. If you're interested in joining us in the after show, you can visit patreon.com forward slash daily hi-fi. We'd love to hang out with you and get to know you better. We're going to have a lot of fun.